Hey guys, this is Jan and this is my channel about the latest in language tech. And today we are talking about Crowdin again and we are talking about the latest they have launched in May and June. What if you have a website and you want to sell internationally, but you have no clue how to do it? How to get your website translated into whatever language you like in under four minutes. So let's dive into it. Andre, what have you launched? Because this is new. It's first of all uh, developed for users who don't have some huge technical skills, but you still need to make your site multilingual. So let's, let's dive into it. Do we need uh, to be a Crowdin client? I guess, no, you can just sign up for a free account on crowdin.com and get started straight away. Yes, it will be enough uh, if you just need one time translation and that's it. I trust it will be fully free for you. We leave a link in the show notes below so that you can get a trial with Crowdin as a bonus here. And idea, yeah, it's really, you just follow this, like in every wizard, we specify our site domain, then here it will, it can scan pages that exist on the site so we can select what we want to translate as uh, to send for translation. It can be also configured later and let's skip it. We click get started and basically, yes, we can now um, send content, wait mm -hmm. for translation and release. <laughs> And that's it. And you even have a scheduler. So if you go to the settings part, you can even program that you want to release in a few days manually or on a regular schedule. So this is pretty cool. I did it with my website, Beluga Linguistics, and it was super neat. So why don't you try it yourself at home with your website? Very easy. Andre, anything else our users should know about this feature? There are just two, two small things. If your site already has localization resources, you can upload them directly to Crowdin. So no big need to use this app, but this app is primarily for users who don't have resources and who need to start a translation fast. And secondly, who knows, probably content that you are going to localize, it's already something that for which Crowdin has a connector available. So in the store, when you even, there is separate CMS <laughs> section available, there is still a chance that CMS that you use is listed here and you can also use it and synchronize pages directly. Sounds excellent. So guys, if your website is still missing any translations, you are missing out a great opportunity to sell your services or products internationally. Go to Crowdin, go to the App Store, download the application and get started. Let's see how this move and let us know in the comments below. What changed now with the new uh, interface? Two changes at the organization level uh, reports. We have some statistics about your organization. You can switch between different criteria. It can be words, strings, characters. So we can see your current volume usage. You can mm. see here how many words you, some useful statistics and very modern, how many words you translated with AI, with machine and with human translators. And what is nice, expert button, it's everywhere, near all the reports that we have. And now this data can be exported to Excel. So you can build mm -hmm. some nice graphs and share it with others. You can see, uh, yes, there is breakdown by languages available. Also source content updates. It's also something that's quite important for you to do analyze, like whether your number of words that you added 
Usyld or it becomes lower. So you can do easy analytics based on this. Date ranges are available basically everywhere. So you can analyze a month, three months, a year. Also expert button is here. Of course. And something very new is the report on the number of QA issues raised. So the, here you can see statistics. Uh, important note that uh, we started collecting this data, if I'm not mistaken, from May. So you unfortunately won't be able to get the statistics for January 2025 or previous periods it's because it's a very new mm -hmm. report. We did not collect this data before, but yeah, for all new issues, you can easily track them. You can see whether they are resolved or not. You can see all these percentages of resolution and you will get some graphs. Yes, you see that in test organizations. It these graphs still don't look perfect, but I'm sure that in our users' projects, it will be like that uh, all the time. So it will be moving live graph here. And yes, we see numbers per language. Mm -hmm. So we see in what language we have most of these different QA issues. Same okay. thing is available here at uh, the project level, but it's actually the same. So you will get statistics per uh, with uh, almost same numbers, but I have, yeah, I need to have a bit more of data in project to get the access to these graphs. Mm. And again, expert. Expert is available basically for every category. So you can get lots of data and then present it anywhere and do some analytics. Andre, you had 50,000 issues there. What would you recommend a project manager who suddenly explores this section and sees, oh, wow, there's uh, 50,000 issues. So is there any suggestion? We need, it happens very often that we really, we don't even pay attention to these issues, but they still exist. We just approve translations and that's it. We need to see, um, after we see this number, we can go a bit deeper into analytics to understand what types of issues are raised the most. So here we display a category per, for every language. Mm. There is a chance that probably, you know, with QA checks, for, even false positives are always possible, especially if we talk about some punctuation in certain languages or something like that. So it may be a signal for you that probably for some QA checks can be safely turned off if you get too many false positives. Mm. Well, not sure if it was a good suggestion, to be honest, but I hope that people who work with Asian languages and then switch into European, they will understand this. There can be always something raised with punctuation or similar things. So what you are saying is the automatic QA feature will impact the total number of issues, of course. Here we see it all displayed. Now the next step would be like going into each language, analyze what has been flagged and eventually modify your settings or make sure that the or translation is issues, yes. in the right way. Yeah, there is a separate filter available. So if you see that in certain language in, in some project, you have very high amount of QA issues that it may be indicator that Probably if you use AI, especially or MT, that probably your provider is not, it should be replaced or adjusted. Uh, so yeah, these are some good signals that may be helpful for us to improve something in our process and get less of these issues raised uh, later on. A little bit of anxiety that can cause in uh, some project managers if they see 50,000 remaining issues. Let's move on. There was a couple of other features in uh, the May and June updates we want to cover in this video. Small updates and integrations. There was in the last update, we talked about the Webflow, Shopify, Dato, Dato, CMS. All these integrations all got smoother, right? Yes, they, we optimized performance there for connectors and we keep working on other connectors as well to add more filters to them because earlier, yes, it was always a challenge when you need to synchronize several pages, not everything, but some pages only from 
mm-hmm. connector to crowd in or vice versa. You had to do quite many clicks. It was not that convenient to select several files or um, filter by languages. Now we've got a bit more of buttons in connectors so users can more efficiently use uh, connectors and synchronize content back and forth. Andre, that was one thing we discussed before, downloaded filters for terms. There are many people working with terminology. So what exactly changed from from the previous version to this version of the export of terms? And why is it useful? There are quite many use cases here in that, but probably the most frequent use case for this feature, why should you download filter terms? One day you've got a report that some user introduced very bad terms translations, or probably you want to revise translations made a year ago by someone else. There are many filters available when you work with your glossary. You can filter strings at, or terms added in period of this, from beginning of this year until today, and you want to skip others. So mm-hmm. you can combine different types of filters. Author may be also handy. Probably you want to verify terms generated by certain person. And then you want not every, uh, not all the time people do that within crowd and they sometimes prefer to outsource this job somewhere to send a file somewhere else to external agency or even share a generate excel and send it to ai to do an extra validation of terms now it's possible for you to do this filtering and mm. instead of downloading complete glossary that will contain all 900 terms that you may have in the glossary you can download filtered results in any of these formats. I think Excel will be probably best way to go for offline translation because TBX, it's a bit more technical format, XML based. Excel will work nice and you send this file anywhere, do some edits, and when job is done, you import it back. So there is, of course, upload button. Improves usability, I think. So you have out of the box when you export content from crowd and you have only necessary data included inside the file, not everything. So you don't have to do some deletions offline. It saves. Okay. Where where can users find this feature? We open the glossary file. In, in crowd and we access the glossary, we do necessary filtering. And after that, we choose terms that we want to export, include into the file, and we use download filtered. Filter. And I will use Excel file. So now we download it. And now Crowden will generate Excel file that will contain only three selected terms. So and basically everything. now you can give your vendors the possibility to review these terms put it in, in a Excel spreadsheet and then upload again to the project as a newly approved term. Yes, yes. And Excellent. overwrite previous invalid translations probably if you have them in your glossary. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I invite you to try a couple of new features we have discussed this week. There's a Gentech AI, another video I recorded together with Andre. Check it out. It's very nice. And see you next time.